A mayor under fire this morning as details of a deadly officer-involved shooting continues to unfold. Your information may be at risk. Hackers get access to millions of people's most sensitive information. We'll explain what you need to know about this data hack. Every year it seems like we've got triple digits. Last year at the Sheep Show, it was 105, I believe. Ah. So. A visit to the county fair and what it takes to keep these prize contestants comfortable in the heat. Good Morning Kansas starts now. Now, live from the Cake Studios, this is Good Morning Kansas. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday morning to you all. Thanks for joining us. I'm Annette Wallace. And I'm meteorologist Kat Taylor. Welcome to Good Morning Kansas. Oh, I love that interview, that little snippet there where the sheep baz in there is like, uh. oh, come on. And we're all feeling it, man. Yeah. It is a toasty, toasty one out there in Cake Land with record setting temperatures yesterday. Yeah, so. yesterday, Salina got to 109, 105 here in Wichita. And unfortunately, I don't have good news if you're looking for relief today. What? But Come there on. is relief in sight, so that is the good news. Okay. But first, we have to get through this dangerous heat out there today. So let's take a quick look outside our Central Care Cancer Center, KCAM. You can see we've got sunny skies already out there right now. We are looking at 81 degrees already this morning. On top of that, we have a dew point of 69. So it is pretty muggy out there as well. Those south winds at about 12 miles per hour bringing in the heat as we go throughout the daytime today. We're looking at 81 in Wichita, 82 in Hutchinson, already at 86 in Salina, 74 in Hayes, with 72 in Colby, 70 in Garden City. And as we go throughout the daytime today, it's really going to heat up. We've got a, a heat warning in effect here in the pink. That is that means heat index values up to 110 degrees, 106 here in the orange. And that's going to go as we head even into the evening hours. So check this out as we head into the afternoon, already 100 degrees by 1 p.m. And we're going to bypass that in into the middle 100s. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Kat. You know, fire and rescue crews work around the clock to keep us safe, but it can be a challenge in the heat. Crews battle an apartment fire in yesterday's excessive heat. A fire breaking out on South Governor, just southwest of Kellogg and Rock Road. The back of one empty apartment was burned and smoke damaged two other units. Crews put out the flames pretty quickly. They managed to rest while extinguishing this fire. We, we just try to drink a lot of fluids and try to get people in shade and get them back as quickly as we can. And then we'll come back and check the fire after, you know, after, uh, periodically from time to time. Investigators have not released the cause of the fire. You know, it's summertime. That definitely means it's going to be pretty balmy outside, especially if you're marching around the Reno County Fairgrounds. Cake's Chris Frank shows us how 4-H'ers are keeping their show animals cool and calm. Yep, 4-H. That's what I do all summer long. All year long, that's what I do. 16 year old Becca Payne of rural Hutchinson says she loves getting her animals ready for the 4 H show at the Reno County Fair. If you gotta work hard for the things you want. And that despite the blistering heat. Every year it seems like we've got triple digits. The heat can wear down both the animals and their handlers. <laughs> it's hard on the sheep. It's hard to keep them hydrated, it's hard to keep them going. But we get there. She gets there by paying attention to detail. Like other 4-H'ers, Payne is constantly watching over her sheep, making certain they don't get heat stress before showtime, which is generally at the hottest time of the day. You'll find her with a bottle in hand spraying the sheep with cool water. Of course, the sheep know to keep their heads in the fan to stay cool. We keep fans on them 24-7. Becca walks the sheep in the show arena they'll be competing in later today, but she's always mindful of the heat making certain the sheep don't get overheated. We keep electrolytes in them just like athletes. And like athletes, this is their arena. And like a good coach, Payne does her part to see they're in peak condition. So we all got to work together and make sure we're drinking our water and drinking, having those electrolytes and keeping us cool. Payne has learned how to deal with the heat from big brother Jason. It'll be hot, so we'll... You know, we'll make sure the kids get plenty of water too. We got to keep them just in good a shape as the sheep. So when these sheep enter the ring, they'll likely be more ready for the heat than the spectators surrounding them. In Hutchinson, Chris Frank, Cake News. The Reno County Fair goes through July 24th and it is free to the public. Well, some of you in Lyon and Coffee Counties are being reminded to boil your water. Water was restored yesterday, but a boil water advisory remains into effect throughout the weekend. The Salvation Army is providing water for the community. Listen, we don't want you as our mayor of Minneapolis anymore. We're asking that you take your staff with you 
Listen, we don't want you to appoint anybody anymore. Man, your leadership has years. been very ineffective, and if you don't remove yourself, we're going to put somebody in place to remove you. We do not want you as the mayor of Minneapolis ever again. We would like for you to move out of our city. Your police department has terrorized us enough. Your press conference is ineffective because you won't let the people in. And you didn't want to hear us, so you hear me now. Protesters shutting down the mayor of Minneapolis, where she announced the resignation of the police chief. Some say the mayor should resign as well after an officer shoots and kills a woman. The woman called police to come to her home for help. Mayor Betsy Hodges asked the police chief to resign because she had lost confidence in the chief's ability to lead, but Mayor Hodges said that she would not do the same. The case of Supreme Court has upheld the murder conviction for Antoine Banks. He was given a life sentence for killing a Wichita radio station employee three years ago. The justices disagreed that Banks was convicted on circumstantial evidence during his first degree murder trial and the death of 25 year old Daniel Flores. You know, we're on our side with details on a big data breach. We're told that this all involves the Kansas Department of Commerce and their data system. Hackers were given access to more than 5.5 million social security numbers. That's what we're learning this morning and states. 10 of them are affected overall. They include Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Delaware, Idaho, Illinois, Kansas, Maine, Oklahoma, and Vermont. Now, this morning we are learning that the suspicious activity was found back in March. The department will pay for credit monitoring for most of the victims. Well, a pesky bug is invading your yard by feasting on your fruits and plants. How to get rid of the Japanese beetle later on GMK. Planet of the Apes dominated the box office last weekend with $56 million in its debut. Can a new film take the top spot? We take a look at what's new in theaters coming up. And the average number of 100 degree days we have each year is 10. We've had six so far, not including today, with more possible next week. I'll talk about that next. Now, your first alert forecast with meteorologist Kat Taylor. Good morning, Cake Land. We are off to a warm start already this morning. If you look here at our Central Care Cancer Center Cake Camp, it is nice and sunny, but unfortunately, that also means it's getting warm as well. It's 81 degrees already this morning. We have a south wind at about 12 miles per hour and a dew point of 69. So when we see that dew point anywhere near 70, that's when we know it's going to be a muggy day and it's going to be hot. So check this out. Temperatures 81 here in Wichita, 82 in Hutchinson, 86 in Salida with 80 in Concordia, 76 in Russell with 72 in Colby. Now, thankfully, far west cake land still at 60, 69 in Goodland, 68 in, in Syracuse. But we will continue to see these temperatures really warm up as we go throughout the daytime today. So check this out. Heat warning in effect here in the pink. That means we can see heat index values up to 110 here in the orange up to 106. It's a heat advisory in effect, so it's going to be hot today here in Cake Land. But if you take a look at satellite and radar, we're seeing a little bit of cloud cover out west. It's really starting to dissipate or fall apart, and that will continue to go throughout the daytime. So as we head throughout the main part of the day, expect clear skies until the afternoon. Once we get to the afternoon, we'll see some building clouds as well as some showers and thunderstorms fire off along a cold front that's going to be pushing through. Now, as we head throughout the evening, we'll see that cold front really quickly move through Cake Land, and that's going to fire off some more showers and thunderstorms this evening farther south and then overnight we'll see those isolated to scattered showers and thunderstorms as we head overnight and maybe even lingering into tomorrow morning. So if you look at your forecast for today, we've got 104 degrees here in Wichita, 106 in Hutchinson and Medicine Lodge. An evening storm is possible, but mainly the better chances are going to happen as we head overnight. Expect isolated thunderstorms, 76 here in Wichita, 72 in Pratt for the overnight low. But as we head into tomorrow, like I said, I promised relief and here it is. 96 on Sunday, 94 on Monday. We do have some chances for some showers and thunderstorms. But unfortunately, we do have more chances for 100 degrees here in uh, South Central Kansas for Wednesday and Thursday. For North Central Kansas, another very hot day, almost a record breaker like we saw yesterday. 107 in Salina, 104 in Abilene, Beloit, Russell, Hayes, 105 in Great Bend. Storms are going to fire off late in the afternoon and continue overnight tonight. So expect scattered showers and storms. 74 in Salina, 70 in Hayes. And as we head through the rest of the week, we are going to see that cool down. 94 for tomorrow, 96 on Monday, but 100 returns as we head into Wednesday. For Western Kansas, you can expect those showers and storms to form late in the afternoon in northwest Kansas. Otherwise, it is going to be hot 
today, 104 in Dodge City and Larned. We've got 102 in Wakini, a little bit cooler in Goodland. That's where we have that cold front draped across the area in northwest Kansas. Now, as that cold front continues to push to the south as we go throughout the overnight hours, expect those scattered showers and storms to follow as well. So for uh, southwest Kansas, 88 degrees tomorrow. That's going to feel great. 94 for Monday, but we're back to 100 on Wednesday for northwest Kansas. We're going to see that significant cool off thanks to that cold front showers and thunderstorms as well. 88 for tomorrow, 92 for Monday, but then of course our temperatures rebound, but you guys are the lucky ones. You're going to be in the 90s instead of the 100s. Well, that's okay. And like, you know, I was saying earlier this morning, 80s in the forecast, that possibility that that Ugh, anything to take us down a little bit. Honestly, 96 is going to feel cool compared to what we've been seeing the past she few days. She says 96 is going to feel <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and take a look at what's new at the box office this weekend. Cool off there. We haven't hung in five years. I miss you guys. We need a girl's trip. Hey, four lifelong friends travel to New Orleans on a girl's trip. Sisterhoods are rekindled and wild sights are rediscovered. Girl's Trip it stars Kate Walsh, Jada Pinkett Smith, Regina Hall, and Queen Latifah. It's packed with a lot of girl night fun to make the big easy blush. Girl's Trip, by the way, is rated R. You know, also new is the movie Valerian uh, and the City of a Thousand Planets. A dark force, it threatens a city and the future of the universe. Two special operatives make it their mission to save everyone. Can they do it? That's the big question. A little look at the future, maybe? I don't know. This film, uh, Valerian, is rated PG-13. And we have another one Kat, yeah. to look forward to as well. From the filmmaker behind Inception and the Dark Knight trilogy comes the action thriller Dunkirk. Allied soldiers from Belgium, the British Empire, Canada, and France are surrounded by the German army. Then they are evacuated during a fierce battle during World War II. Dunkirk? It's rated PG-13. Yeah, it looks like, Historical, I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah, anything, you know, I, I think that's the big film of the weekend. If I were to put money on things, which I'm not allowed to, but if you were to put some, maybe <laughs> that would know. But uh, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, summer films, they're always huge, so. Can't wait to see some I, of these. Yeah, definitely, definitely so. Hey, you know, a lot of people couldn't wait to see this guy, Ron Baker, back in town. We hear from him, him on his new deal with the New York Knicks. That's coming up next in sports. And you have to check this out. A baseball fan doesn't let a foul ball get in the way of following the rules of minor league baseball. This is Good Morning Kansas with Annette Wallace and meteorologist Kat Taylor with your Cake First Alert forecast. Cake News on your side. Hey, over to Kansas City this morning. KC in the middle of their 10-game homestand opening up a three-game series with the White Sox trailing 5-1 to one here Mike Moustakis. This is the first home run since before the All-Star break, 26th of the year. Last Royal third baseman to hit 26 in a season. We're talking about George Brett, my friends, back in 1985. Uh, you know, down to the fifth, though, they're down two. Alex Gordon ties us with six at that time with the second RBI double. Overall, they were knotted up at six in the ninth, but the Royals, they take home this game seven to six. Go KC. Hey, a fan at a minor league baseball game in Fort Wayne, Indiana, succumbs to beer pressure after catching a foul ball in her cup. Take a look at this. It's a tradition when uh, you know when something like this happens you I guess you have to go and chug your beer after it all partakes I guess but uh, you know what this woman she gladly did without even taking the ball out of the cup. There she goes. That is some dedication right there coming to us from Indiana. A lot of fun. Hey why don't we go ahead and get to the rest of your morning sports highlights with Chase. Now with sports from all across Cakeland, here's Cake Sports anchor Chase Shannon. The 83rd NBC World Series is here 1.30 this afternoon. The first game between the Austin Shockers and the Sterling Express. It's going to be hot, but a lot of fun over these next two weeks. Get ready. Our coverage starts on our evening newscasts tonight. All right, let's head over to Andover. The semifinals at the U.S. Junior Amateur yesterday. Noah Goodwin last year's runner-up here on 14. Look at this par putt. It bends in, and that pretty much pushes him in. To the final as Rahan Thomas can't hit the birdie putt to extend the match. So Goodwin does luck up his spot on the opposite side. This is future Oklahoma State Cowboy Matthew Wolf battling South African Garrick Higo. Wolf up two here on 17 and Higo's tee shot goes into the hazard and that all but does it. He ends up conceding the hole setting up a 36 hole showdown between these two Americans which starts at 7 this morning.
try to do the same thing I did last year. I mean, I played great golf in the final last year, and I'm going to have to um, against whoever I play tomorrow. And I just have to keep playing my own game and just stick to my game plan. Just grind. I'm really excited, and like I said, this is such a prestigious tournament with so many great players. And to just make it to the final, I mean, let alone quarterfinals or semifinals is unbelievable, but I'm just going to have to go out there, stick to my game plan, and hopefully I take it down tomorrow. Also in Andover, Ron Baker back in town hosting his basketball camp as they took to the YMCA out there. The next guard joining up with some current shockers to help some area youngsters hone their hoop skills. The Scott City kid grabbed headlines earlier this summer when he signed his two-year contract extension with New York. Remember, Baker came into last year undrafted with no guarantees, but now he's got the big money coming to him, and he's still, though, going to keep things simple. I tell everybody I'm going to stay the same. I'm going to drive my Sonata in New York. I only have it for six months. I don't need a Bugatti or anything like that. I'm a finance major, so people probably get an idea of where my money is going to be going. <laughs> Heartland Conference champion FC Wichita back in action tonight over at the Striker Complex. They're hosting Midland Odessa FC in their South Region semifinal. This is huge to have this game here as they try to continue to score early and often while this team, like all great teams, seems to be peaking at the right time. At this point right now, it's where we're playing the best soccer we, we could have. And uh, since the beginning, we were going step by step and getting better and getting better. And uh, I think right now is the, is the best point we, we had. So. If we can put them on the back foot uh, even further, then it, it makes it, it more beneficial to us. And, and we've capitalized on that in the past two games. Um, and now hopefully we can do it another time tomorrow. Kickoff coming tonight at 8 o'clock. And that's a look at your sports. Have a great day. That now brings us to 821, a new warning from the Better Business Bureau this morning with a scam that's popping up on Facebook, it's popping up online, and it's all involving your pets. We have details coming up, and a Caitlin community is coming together to help this little guy. We'll show you the tough battle he faces and how you can help. Hey, welcome back to our Caitlin Care segment. This morning, I want you to get to know a little boy. He's in our community, uh, a little spunky, what, three-year-old named Easton, and I think a lot of good is coming from his story this weekend because we're hoping to promote some positivity in his life. Um, he's a, a little boy facing a pretty tough time medically and this morning we have his dad and also a group joining us to share a bit about um, how they're going to help. So uh, this morning I have Neil Toll and Jessica uh, Mazanti to share a bit about that but Neil why don't we go ahead and, and pull you in and tell us a little bit about your boy and what y'all are facing right now. Well, my son has been diagnosed with a disease called severe aplastic anemia. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a pretty serious disease. It it's his bone marrow failing basically, so his body's not producing any new cells. Right now he's doing okay. He gets several transfusions a month. Um, and I mean it keeps him keeps him going here for a while until we figure out what we're doing with him. Yeah, I'm sure it's pretty hard though for you it's, all to see that, see your little guy go through it. I, I would rather not be in this position. Absolutely, but. absolutely. But, uh, you know, what I'm hoping is that we're, we're sharing a bit about, uh, you know, some people coming together to help you all out. And that's where we pull in Jessica here. So she's a part of this group called The Berry, The Berry Kansas. Mm -hmm. And you all do a lot of good in the community. We do, yes. But starting what next weekend, next Saturday, you're hoping to go and help out the, the family here. So tell us a bit about the event. Um, so next Saturday, we'll be at Sam Orbuski's in Park City from four to seven. We're doing kind of like a taco feed for them. Um, it'll be $10 a plate. You'll get two tacos, beans, rice, chips and salsa, and a dessert to go with it. Um, there'll be several silent auction items available. Um, also, we'll have Team Easton bracelets, um, and we're kind of just going to hang out, you know, support Neil and um, Shay and their family and stuff, and kind of just help them as much as we can. I know that's a, a big initiative for the group there to go and mm -hmm. help, you know, people kind of in these trying times. For you, Neil, though, I, you know, I'm curious, what does it mean to you to have you know, people in the community come forward and say they want to help. I mean, it, it's, it's a tough time, I know, but to have that, that generosity, what does that mean to you? It's overwhelming, if I'm going to be honest. Um, when we first started this path, um, my mom actually set up a GoFundMe account, mm -hmm. and it was really just to try and get enough money from the community to help pay for gas to get to and from doctor's appointments and for the little bit of work I'm gonna miss. And then uh, I believe it was my stepmom told me that 
Jess was setting all this up. And since that day, it has just exploded. It's expanded so much. There's so many people that are willing to help, so many people that don't necessarily know me or know my son. It's just the amount of people in a community coming together for one cause. It's just, it's amazing. I think so too. I really do. And I, I know, like I said, it's a trying time for, for your family, but what we're hoping is that, you know, getting people aware of, of course, you know, your boy's condition and just that awareness of knowing about that and maybe getting people interested in that, that, that bone marrow donation process, the process of knowing everything, but also just about the benefit itself. So to just recap a little bit about the event that's taking place ne next weekend, I want you all to see this right here. So the Tacos for Easy Benefit, that taco dinner, silent auction, four to seven next Saturday um, at Samuel Brewski's that's in Park City. Uh, I just put some information up on our Facebook fan page. So if you have a chance to go and share that, we would, we would love for you to go and like I said, I, you know, maybe if you can't go and make it, maybe you have a friend that can. It's always good to just share a little bit about um, stories like this in our community, I find. So we're so glad to have you both here, Neil and Jessica, to be able to share a little bit about the message. And we all wish the very best for your little boy, definitely. You'll have to keep us posted on everything. And we'll be sure to be sure to share more with you all right here on, um, on the progress of Little Easton at right here in Good Morning Kansas. We'll be right back with more right after the break. Stay with us. Now, live from the Cake Studios, this is Good Morning Kansas. Well, good morning, everybody. It's 831 on this Saturday morning. Welcome to GMK Saturday. Hey, you know what? I know a lot of people, it was so hot yesterday. Oh, I don't know about you, but it was, I had to stay inside a lot yesterday. But hopefully, Kat, uh, we have some good news maybe down the line for folks if we want to stay cool today. Maybe. Yeah, unfortunately, no good no? news today. Okay. But as we head into tomorrow, there's great news. So uh, let's get down to it. Look at those 69 degrees right now on our Goodland camera sponsored by Frontier Ag. So basically, uh, it's cool out in northwest Kansas, at least compared to the rest of the state. Check this out. We are already 81 here in Wichita, already at 86 in Salina, 74 in Hayes, 76 in Russell. Goodland, like I said, on the cooler side, but right down the road in Colby, it's already 73. 70 in Garden City, 75 in Dodge City. But as we head throughout the daytime today, it's another day of dangerous heat. We have a heat warning in effect here in the pink until later on this evening. And we can see heat index values up to 110. There in the orange, it's a heat advisory. That heat index can get up to 106, which means that could be pretty dangerous. So make sure you drink lots of water today. Our air temperature getting up to 104 degrees. There is relief on the way, but also more 100 degree days. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Kat. You know, between the heat and maybe those bugs out there, some things can be pretty frustrating, but it'll be a few more weeks before a pesky beetle goes back underground. The Japanese beetle is invading gardens across the state. The insects, they like to feed on fruit and rose bushes. K-State researchers say if left alone, the bugs could harm your plants. They can actually do a lot of defoliation of that vegetation of those leaves, so they'll kind of skeletonize the leaves. To get rid of them, you'll want to knock them off your leaves and into a bucket of soapy water. That's pretty much your only solution because experts say it is too late in the season to use insecticides. A union representing Kansas State employees say officers at the El Dorado Correctional Facility are being overworked. The Kansas Organization of State Employees says some workers at the Maximum Security Prison are being required to work 16-hour shifts. The union says eight officers have complained about the practice, which started earlier this month. An hours-long disturbance happened at the prison on June 29th. The union says it has filed a grievance with the corrections secretary. Ellsworth police take to social media to find the owner of drugs found in a grocery store bathroom. You have to take a look at this. So police say an eyeglass case worth of about 50 bucks of meth and a glass pipe. They were found at the men's bathroom at Jean's Food Mart. The chief joked he would give the owner of the case a free ride, but he didn't exactly say where. Hey, this morning we have a scam alert for you. We want you to be informed about this one. Posting on social media, it's a good way to alert people about problems with lost pets, right? Well, now the Better Business Bureau warns that that same publicity can put your pet at risk. You can be at risk for scams, in fact. Here's how the latest scam works. Days after your post, a person will message you saying that they have the pet. You then ask them what they found, but things can often take a strange turn. A scammer will give you excuses like being out of town or not having a way to take pictures, like with their cell phone. 
They'll then pressure you for money to return that pet. The BBB says to not pay up though. Instead, here's what you're encouraged to do, or at least knowledge of how to avoid getting into this lost pet con. You're encouraged to limit information in your posts, like omitting details about any unique physical features of your pet. Watch for any spoof phone numbers. Ask for a photo. You want to see if they do in fact have your pet. Never wire money. And be sure to microchip or ID tag your pet. Those are ways to avoid this lost pet con. Hey, Wichitans are celebrating the city's 147th birthday, and we really found no shortage of people showing their town pride. The triple digit heat did not keep some people from posing for photographs in front of city murals like this one. The Wichita Sedgwick County Historical Museum, they're going to celebrate Wichita's birthday today from 1 to 5. Anyone bringing a birthday card will get in for free. Hey, one family shows us their ICT pride by experiencing all of the city's parks. And as Cake's Monica Castro shows us, she catches up with them on their new summer adventure. Wichita boasts more than 100 parks. We thought maybe there was like 40 or 50 tops, not 123. Right, and it's become the golf family mission to visit them all. A chance for brothers Weston and Sully to bond. We get to have fun, spend time with our family, and it's also spending time with brothers. The brothers' best quest started a month ago, an idea the boy's mom, Katie, had brainstormed would be fun to blog about. I wanted to make the, the most out of my summer with the boys. Now, after every stop, it's a tradition to take a snapshot of each park sign. It's interesting to see they don't have any preconceived notions on any kind of side of town, and so they see a playground, they see kids to play with, and it's beautiful. How do you rate this park, Weston? Up, up, up. The brothers enjoy parks with monkey bars the best. You can feel free like a monkey. I'm pretty much a gymnastics kid. The family tries to visit two or three parks a night. And on the weekend, it's an all-day affair, including a stop to a local restaurant. There's just so much to do. Mm -hmm. I can't stress that enough. Um, just hidden treasures. Um, there's something for everyone. It's a summer these boys will never forget. You get to have a lot of fun, make new friends spend time with your family. The Gaw family has more than 60 parks left to visit before school starts in August. In Wichita, Monica Castro, Cake News. And the family has been blogging about their adventures. So far, they've enjoyed McAdams and Elm Parks. Hey, we have a little update for you. It's this little boy who lit up the internet with his infectious attitude, but we do have a somber update for y'all. Somber news this morning. The little Massachusetts boy, Ari Schultz, has passed away. Now, Ari has had more than 10 operations, including one heart transplant. He was in the hospital for nearly 200 days. He recently went home, uh, but Ari had some sort of complications late into the week, and his family, in fact, shared this picture overnight, saying that Ari passed away peacefully as he listened to the Red Sox play his favorite team. Uh, the photo of him right here is before he started having the medical trouble. It's been shared more than 3,000 times by a lot of people this morning. A lot of people saying they're heartbroken, uh, just as we are right here in the news by hearing that update right there. Well, that brings us now to 838. And you know, it's really important to drink plenty of water, to wear that sunscreen on a day like today. But this morning, we have expert advice for hot weather safety, uh, including what you need to know to make sure that the most vulnerable people are going to be okay. And that dangerous heat continues here in Cakeland, looking at very, very hot today. This afternoon, there is relief on the way. We have a cold front. It's going to bring some storms both this afternoon, this evening, and tonight. I'll break it down for you next. Now, your first alert forecast with meteorologist Kat Taylor. Get ready for the heat out there today. If you take a look at our weather bug camera out at El Dorado High School, it's already 83 degrees. We have a dew point of 72, so very muggy. But you add those two together and you get a heat index of 89. That's what it feels like out there right now. Already feeling like 89. Whew, it's getting hot. So we're looking at 84 in Lincoln, 84 in Caldwell, 88 already in Eureka with 82 in Cheney. Heat index values 95 already out in Eureka. It is hot already. Now we are going to continue to see these temperatures really get up there. It's 80 in McConnell right now, 82 in Jabera. We've got 81 in Augusta, 86 in Viola with 83 in Halstead, 85 in Burton. So we are looking at those uh, temperatures starting to really get up there. Salina, 
already to 86. That's kind of giving you a little bit of foreboding what we're going to see later on today. Like yesterday, 76 in Russell, 74 in Hayes with 69 in Goodland and 70 in Garden City. But as we go throughout the daytime today, here's a look at our ICAST model. Now it's going to show you heat index. So as we head through lunchtime at noon, that heat index or feels like temperature is already going to be 103 in Wichita, feeling like 103 in Hutchinson at noon, and it's going to feel like 105 in Salina. Now let's fast forward into the late afternoon, about 245, 3 o'clock. It's going to feel like 108 here in Wichita, feeling like 109 in Salina, and I think we could actually get feeling like 110 or higher in Salina as we go throughout the daytime today. So satellite and radar showing just a little bit of cloud cover out there today. Really going to break up until we head into the afternoon. Now by afternoon time, by four, we've already got that cold front firing off some showers and thunderstorms in northwest Kansas. As we head into the evening hours, we're going to see that front continue to push through the area. That's going to create some showers and storms pretty much for all of us this evening and into the overnight hours. We might even see some of these linger as we head into tomorrow as well. So if we were cake land forecast, it's looking like we're going to see isolated showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon, becoming a little bit more widespread across northern Kansas throughout the evening and in the overnight hours, isolated thunderstorms for southern Kansas as well. But look at this temperature change. We've got 104 here in Wichita today, 107 or higher in Salina, but that cold front cooling things down quite a bit in northwest Kansas, 96 degrees for your high temperature. As we head into tomorrow, things are really going to change. Thanks to that cold front pushing through tonight, that's going to bring the showers and thunderstorms, cooling things down quite a bit. So let's take a look at your seven day forecast tomorrow here in Wichita, Hutchinson, Winfield, Narc City, 96 for tomorrow. So it's going to feel quite a bit cooler. 94 for Monday. We've got some showers and thunderstorms possible, but unfortunately those temperatures right back into the 100s as we head into Wednesday for north central Kansas. Big drop from 107 today to, to 94 tomorrow. But unfortunately, that 100 returns midweek next week for Garden City Dodge City Liberal looking at 88 for tomorrow. But then we're back to 100 by Wednesday, so 88 is going to feel cool, especially in northwest Kansas. But then we go right back to those middle 90s. The good news for northwest Kansas looks like you have chances for showers and storms each day, although those chances are small once we get past tomorrow night. We'll take those small chances. Yes, they're so lucky. Anything it's to okay. cool us down, right? It's all good. It's all good. Hey, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and take a look at what's trending this morning? Have you heard of this? The life of Steve Jobs is headed for the opera. The revolution of Steve Jobs is set to open uh, tonight actually at the Santa Fe Opera, home to the largest summer opera festival in the U.S. The high-tech production jumps in and out of the key moments in the Apple founder's life. It incorporates sounds from products Jobs has created, including the audio synonymous with turning on an early Macintosh computer. Can you imagine? Oh, that'd be interesting. Hey, you know what, and have you seen this? It was a strange sight in the streets of Kansas City yesterday. A man wearing only boxer shorts jumped on top of a television news van. Uh, he refused to go down and delayed traffic by about 20 minutes or so. Police surrounded that van and were able to talk him down. And in fact, the Kansas City Police, they put out a pretty quippy tweet, I guess I should say, um, saying that it's probably just not a good idea to hop on top of vans like that. Yeah, did, but so. let's be glad that our technology no longer has to be in a van. It can fit in a backpack it for us It can fit in a backpack, right? <laughs> and it's always good to know that that man is, is safe in, in regards yes. to everything that happened there. Hey, you know what? Coming up after the break, you know, we've been talking about the, the summer heat. Why not summer heat safety? We have an expert from Right at Home joining us to talk about summer safety, especially when it comes to our seniors. Stay with us. It doesn't get more Kansas than a picture like this. This comes to us from Jean Robertson. Uh, Jean tells us, spent a long time along the banks of the Arkansas River here in Garden City. Uh, the water is flowing again, and it looks pretty cool, this view right here. We'd love to see pictures of what's happening near you. You can feel free to post them up to our Facebook fan page. Well, you know, we are on your side this morning to keep you safe and health, healthy for summer. I know a lot of people, being out in that heat, it can feel, it, it it's overwhelming at times, and certainly, you can be put at risk by being outside for too long if you're not taking the right steps to make sure that you and your family are safe. Well, this morning we have Carla Shepard of Right at Home to talk about the importance of summer safety, especially when it comes to some of our more vulnerable populations. And really everyone's, you know, can be at risk at, at times with the temperatures getting, especially yesterday, so hot. Oh, I know. So in regards to summer safety and the heat, what do we need to know? 
Number one, you hear it all the time, drink water, drink water. Mm -hmm. uh, don't wait until your body is saying it's thirsty. Keep water with you and just periodically keep drinking it. And most of all, stay inside. Make sure you're in an air conditioned place. And if you don't have air conditioning, then go to a senior center or a mall or some place, a public place, where you can get at least a little bit of relief for a short time out of this heat. And there are options. The library, for example, I mean, a lot of people exactly. head out to those just because it is available and you can go and enjoy some parts of the community while doing so. That's Carla, right. are there any common mistakes or things that you find that people should make sure that they're avoiding when it comes to being safe, a little bit smarter during this time of year? You know, if, and this is for in their home, there are times that if you have a loved one or a family member, check in on them daily. And if you can literally go into their home and check their thermostat, because a lot of times they think, oh, it's so hot, I need to turn the air up. They turn it up instead of down. Mm. So there is confusion and sometimes comfort can be just going and checking in on their thermostat. So that's uh, one that we've found that a lot of our clients have issues with. It's just the thermostat. Dressing cool, mm -hmm. make sure the clothing you have on um, is loose fitting. Mm -hmm. So that way the air can flow a little bit better and avoid caffeinated drinks, colas, teas, coffee. Uh, those tend to make you urinate more, which can cause dehydration. Yeah, so hard so, to do, but I know, you know, it's, I know. it's important, definitely. I, I think it's just so good to have some guidance when it comes to summer safety, and we really appreciate your time here this morning, Carla. So again, you know, when it comes to being safe out there, hydrate, stay in a place that's uh, indoors if you can, exactly. as much as you can, but you know, there are a lot of options for people in terms of public places of just staying outside because or staying from being outside because it, that exposure just a little bit man it can certainly add up especially with these record setting temperatures well Absolutely. we appreciate your time Carla Thank this you. morning we'll be right back with more right here on Good Morning Kansas stay with us all right and for that final look at the forecast cat yeah that dangerous heat continues mm -hmm. out there so expect uh, the heat advisory still in effect actually as we head throughout the daytime heat warning there in the pink we mm. could see heat index values up to 110. That wow. can be very dangerous very quickly. So you can see this puppy trying yeah. to keep cool there on the ice. I feel so <laughs> here's some ways to keep cool. I know we just talked about it, but let me just reiterate. Hydrate early and often. Take breaks. Do all your work early. So if you're mowing the lawn, do it this morning. Wear light clothing. And, of course, remember those pets. Remembering those pets. And, hey, take a look at this pet. A uh, trending pet, in fact, online. A golden retriever in Scotland recently gave birth to a bunch of puppies. But one of them, Lookie, is not golden at all. Check out oh the goodness. little green fella named Forrest. Smart, right? Uh, the rare <laughs> phenomenon is thought to happen when puppies in the womb come in contact with a green pigment found in the bile. Uh, the color, though, it usually fades with time, so Forrest will, will match the others in the Golden Retriever family. But how cool is that? Kind of interesting. A little science fact for I you like, there. I like his name. It's I very like that. Very cute. Hey, and you know what? It is that time of year that we see a lot of sunflowers pop up across Cake Land, but take a look at this. A quaint farm in Paris, Illinois. Uh, they have a, a field filled with yellow, and it's catching the eyes of a lot of people, turning a lot of heads, because this is a sunflower maze. It has more than 100,000 sunflowers, and this year's maze has a special theme. It's spelled out with happy 100th grandma. Aww. So how cool. That grandma must feel like the luckiest grandma on the planet. Uh, the maze has become a musty attraction for summer. And I think it's just so cool to see all those. I don't know about you, but when when this time of year pops up and we get a C, see there's the message to grandma. Aww. That's awesome. Um, yeah, when, when I see those sunflower pictures from people, because a lot of people go and they have particular locations that they head out to, and I just love seeing them. And I need to know on our fan page a request. I want people to list the places that they go and get their pictures because there are certain places that really have amazing sunflowers. Yeah, like the full fields yeah, of sunflowers. Yeah, I know some people, they'll head out to, like, a lot of my family's from Belle Plaine, so a lot of them head over there uh -huh. to check out stuff. But I would love to hear where everyone else is going. So go to our fan page right now and let us know. But, hey, don't forget to join us for Cake News at 6 and 10 o'clock tonight. We'll be back for Good Morning Kansas at 6 and 8 tomorrow morning. Have a good day. For up-to-the-minute news and weather, stay connected to Cake News with Facebook, Twitter, and Cake.com. Cake News on your side. Here's a smart remodeling tip. 
Let Granite Transformations design and install your new bathroom with gorgeous quartz and granite, backed by our lifetime warranty. It's easy and stress-free. 